Hey, what's up, good people? This is Eddie Gray, and we are back at it again, covering Logic Pro today. We are continuing our conversation on live hey, what's up, loops. Good people? Now, it's very important that we understand one thing. There is no series like this one anywhere in the interwebs. So I want to make sure that you understand the value here. We're going to learn live loops. This is something that you've been interested in getting into. Perhaps you want to be a live performer. Perhaps you want to DJ a set. Or you just want your creative space and your creative workflow to be heightened. This is going to be a great session. I'm looking forward to serving you. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I hope this message finds you well. We're getting into live loops today. Looks like we're talking about the quantized start value. Super important when it comes to live loops. Get ready, here we go. All right guys, let's bring some energy to it. Here we go. If you're tired, you know what to do. Let's go! Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Very good, very good. Yeah, so you have full control over how it goes. And uh, I'm super excited to be here. Continuing on the story. Which story? Live loops. And so... Uh, as you may have remembered, we were covering kind of just the, the overall infrastructure. Now today, we zoom in, we get into the microcosm, and we look at all the fair details. Let's start with quantize start value. All right, so we, we, we touched on it yesterday, but today we will clearly define it. Let's talk about quantize start value. You can set the quantize start value for the entire live loops grid for one scene, vertical scene, or the individual cell. And you can change it while cells are playing. Okay, so just from the get-go, the user guide has established some of the laws, right? So it's good to pay attention here and understand what they're saying. They're saying, hey, we can determine how the, the live loops grid behavior works with the quantized start indicator. Now, it's not just global. We can have a setting for the global quantized start value, but we can also have a setting unique. Unlike the, the global setting, we can have it set for just the scene. And of course, we can change from scene to scene to scene. And then of course, we zoom in a little tighter, we can change the quantized start value for the individual cell. Now, it may not make sense at the moment, but I'm telling you, once you see the value here, this becomes an instrument. So let's keep reading. When you trigger a scene, all the cells in that specific scene are going to use the quantized start value for that scene. When you start or stop an individual cell, each cell uses its own quantized start value. Okay. So it looks something like this. You have an overall grid value, and then the hierarchy shifts to the scene, and we can change the quantized start value for the scene, but maybe there is one or two or three cells that you would like to create some effects with. So we would utilize quantize start to manipulate its playback. And when you do that, you have full control over the spectrum. Global, scene, 
vertical scene and individual cell playback. Okay, let's keep going. To set the quantize start value for the live loops grid, we know that we have to choose a value right there in the quantize start menu. And um, again, right next to that, you have a visual component that's letting you know when the global scene or cell were, will play back again based on its own individual setting. To set the quantize start value for a scene, right? Because this up here is global. What do I do if I want to set it for a scene? At that point, you would hover the mouse over the scene icon, right? Intro, verse, what have you. Control click it, and then you would go into the quantize start menu from here. Same thing goes for the cells. And um, in this case, uh, the cell inspector, play mode. Mm. Okay. So what's interesting is with the cells, we can change it in two spots. Number one, the cell inspector, right? You go into the cell inspector, hit the disclosure triangle, open up that menu. Then we can go ahead and choose the quantize start. Of course, that's not the only way. You can also control click the cell itself, go into the menu item playback, quantize start, and then from this sub menu, you can choose quantize start value. Okay, let's finish this off and then we'll go into the DAW. In addition to bar and beat values, you can also choose the following quantize start options. And we've, we've touched on these before as mentioned. We can Set the quantize start to cell end. In other words, when this cell ends, then we will stop or then we will go, depending on where you are in that timeline. Um, for example, I have one revolution going, right? So let's picture a circle here. And I press play. And I want to bring in the drums. Well, if I have the drums set to cell end, this basically won't uh, start playing until we get to the very beginning of that new revolution. Same thing goes if I was playing uh, back and trying to stop. I play the drums and then I want to stop them. It will not stop playing until you get to the end of the cell playback, regardless of how long the quantized start goes one bar two bars three bar doesn't matter until you get to the end of the cell right we'll go over this in a second off all right sometimes you want cells to start and stop when you click them regardless of all of this time management material that we've been covering um this can be good for one shots so let's say you just want to throw in a quick chime or some percussion here and there, just based on feel, right? It doesn't necessarily have to make musical sense. It doesn't have to adhere to the musical time values or laws. It's gonna be great. Trick of the cell, doesn't matter when you play it, it doesn't adhere to any of the rules. It is essentially off of the grid, okay? Then we have global, right? So global means that the cell or the scene follows the quantized start value of the grid. It's on by default. We know what it does. It's, it's um, I mean, as it says here, probably the best choice for most situations. All right, there is one more that we should look at, and that is the smart pickup. Now, they're not giving us a lot of information on this, but we did garner some information, and that's logic kind of makes the best choice based on when you play back. But we know that if you play back too late, essentially that the beginning of the the cell or the scene can sound a bit messy so i would not turn this on if you want to try it that's fine but you really have to be precise in terms of when you hit your playback or when you trigger your scene or when you trigger your cell okay so that's a good introduction let's uh let's keep it going here if you have any questions i'll check the comments during halftime and then of course if you just want to show some support you can share this at any time and then of course you can email my team support at hfmusicacademy.com and uh just show us some love there all right 
want to get into it, eager to show you some great stuff here. This is really the only way to do it, right? Just spending time with it. You can watch a video that is one minute, two minutes long. You're, you're just not going to gather the same information, right? It, it's not going to stick. So I'm giving you information that will last for two, five, ten years. So that's what we're trying to do here, okay? All right, so let's talk about this quantized start value. Now, as you may have remembered, I was showing you the starter grids, or at least I recommended them yesterday. So this time, instead of starting with a new project, I'm going to go into starter grids, and I'll select something from here, and all of these are nice. Let's start with, um, let's do chill hip hop masher so i'll choose okay and so the starter grids are really really good when you're first learning the ins and outs of the program all right so let me go ahead and just check sound make sure that everything is working and it's up to par here i'll bring down the master take care of our ears here let's try this out all right good all right and as we established the last time around option b hybrid workflow the playhead is moving and continuously moving as soon as either you press spacebar or you start triggering something so right now the playhead has stopped i'll trigger uh these vocal chops and you can see that the playhead is moving okay Let's stop the playback. So we're looking at quantize start. In order to really get this, we should turn on the click. Key command K. Okay. So click is on. And probably a good idea is to just listen to the click. So let me solo dummy track. I'll press play and listen to the playback. One. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, so now you understand the time. And I will turn on this drum set and we'll look at one full revolution and how this is playing back. So let's turn on the drums. We know that we can only play one of these cells at a time, right? This is all the same channel strip, so they're not gonna change. I wanna be clear that you can actually have different loops. Like for example, I'll take uh, this synth right here and I'll drag it up here. Now, it will play back, but it, it doesn't make sense to do it this way. You might confuse yourself, so it's better to keep everything clean, simple, the way you would arrange a song, right? This is the verse, second track here is a chorus, then you go into some type of drop, and then you know rinse and repeat, break down, and then rinse and repeat. So that's probably the best way to do this. So let's play back these drums. Now bear in mind, the playhead is off, or stopped rather, and the quantized start indicator is reset as the playhead is not necessarily moving, yeah? So I'll hit the drums and everything will work in unison. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four, one, two, three, four, good. All right, good. So the cell, as we can see in the cell inspector on the top left, the length of it is two bars. The quantized start indicator is set to one. So let's play this back again, and let's look at how many rotations we get as this plays back. Two, three, four. All right. So by the time we get through four, then that's when we kind of start the process over again. So if I double click on this first cell, let's look at it. Let's just take a, a, a fine look at from top to bottom what's going on here. So yeah, this is in fact two bars. And we're seeing the relationship between the quantized star indicator and how it plays back. Okay. So let's do it a little bit different this time. Let's do uh, a 16th note and let's see how fast this moves. This time I'll just press the space bar. 
But look how fast that's moving. That's probably not a good idea if you're really trying to get things to sync up. Why they make it available, I'm not sure, but I'm sure, you know, I mean, maybe if the, if the tempo is a lot slower, right, maybe there's a world where that works. I don't know. Let me just try it for fun. Let's do 16th notes at this uh, BPM and see how, if this works a little bit better. Still very fast. One E and a two E and it, right? Uh, I'll do one last uh, attempt. Yeah. So I guess... In a world, this may make sense, but not today. Um, we're probably going to end up using one bar, or here's quarter notes. This might be a little bit more um, feasible. Check it out. So every quarter note, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Let's do every, uh, let's do half notes. So one, four. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Yeah. So that's how that's broken down. Now, let's see, the sail length is two. So let's move this to two bars now. And these now should match up perfectly, right? I mean, we're just really doing some, some basic math here. And I want to be clear about something. When I work, I'm not thinking about all of this like a scientist or something like that. When I work, I'm just free. But when you're not working when you're not producing when you're not collaborating when you're not serving a client or what have you you want to make sure that you study and you study hard so you understand all aspects and so you can mitigate risk so that when you are in the flow nothing is inhibiting or or preventing you from getting to that next level so i just want to be clear like we're here spending the time studying and working together and getting our repetitions in but this is only preparation, all right? So uh, you, this is not how you're going to think about it when you're actually just making music. We're just preparing your mind, your subconscious mind, so that when it's time to work, you can get to work. All right, let's, uh, let's try this out here. So then now, bear in mind, quantized start indicator is two bars. This is two bars. Let's go. Good. All right. So that's good. And let's do one last one for four bars. Here we go. Check it out. Oh, wait. I want to start from the top. Uh, let's go here. And let me reset this just in case. And let's start again. So now they're basically coinciding. All right. That's... The most basic version of it. I don't think many of you are even going to need this. In most cases, there will be some some case scenarios where you're like, ah, this doesn't work as well. Or maybe you're trying to trigger this one and then this one right after by utilizing a key command or a controller. And it, it won't be fast enough. And so you'll need a different time for the quantized star indicator. But like I said, for the most part, this bar should work really nice. Let me show you what I mean. So I'll play this for the first bar. And then I'll trigger that. Let's get the toppers in here. Okay. So you can see that all of that took some time because of the quantized star indicator. But let's say, I don't know, maybe you wanted to trigger things a little bit faster. All right, let's go with half a note this time. So here we go. Okay, so you can see that I'm triggering, and this time I don't have to wait anymore because the quantized start indicator is is getting closer to its destination of starting a, a new revolution, right? So sometimes if you're using a slower value, like one bar, two bars, you have to wait for the entire revolution for then to start. And this is why, in essence, you would have primarily one bar here for the quantized start indicator. And then as mentioned in the user guide down here, you can control click and you can go to play mode 
or wait, where's the quantize start? Here we go. And you can set the scene to trigger differently. And again, the reason this is because maybe every other scene or every other cell works with the global setting, which is one bar. But in the case of this one, we needed to trigger uh, a bit differently. I'll give you one example. If I go to one bar, okay, uh, and yeah, so this is set to one bar, this is set to one bar. Um, if you didn't do anything and, and you hadn't set it up, it would basically default to one bar. Um, but I just want to give you an example of what it sounds like with different uh, scene um, triggers. So again, we're, we're manipulating quantize start for the scene now, so I'll press play here. Okay, I have to wait for that to go bun, dun, again now. I have to wait again. All right. If I control click, go into play mode, quantize start rather. Go into half notes. Let's listen to the difference now. You ready? Here we go. Did you catch that? So even though the global quantized start indicator is has not made its full revolution, the scene is set to half the time. And so I'm able to play it back much faster. And so maybe you want to have a verse where you're creating that infamous Pharrell intro trick. And then the song starts. So I'll give you a good example here. You ready? Here we go. Go. Right? And then at that point, the song would just start. And then let's say maybe you wanted to do that again. Here we go. So you can see the value here. You're really just a DJ. If you watched any hip hop shows back in the day, you know that essentially there was the artist, right? The one. Then there was the hype man or two or three or the entourage. And then Lonely Wolf in the back was DJing, basically playing the set so that everybody could enjoy the music. He was holding it down. Now, of course, like pre-80s, there was no like, you know, click tracks or anything. So this was all done by ear and by feel. So that was uh, some amazing artistry and wizardry. Now we have the benefit of technology. You can make a bunch of mistakes and it doesn't really matter. Uh, everything will kind of still be in time. Now, of course, we want to use that to our advantage. But I just want to be clear that if you're performing now, you have like so much at your disposal and the margin of error is very slim, especially if you learn what it is that you need to learn. Yeah. Okay. Let's continue on here. Eddie Gray reading the logic user guide. Hope you guys are well. Happy Thursday. We're doing this six days a week. Just crushing the game. I'm seeing all the subs going up, so much appreciated. Uh, much love, much respect. I'm here to serve you guys, and I just wanted to thank you again for the opportunity. All right, so we've gone over quantize start. We can, you know, break this down to a bloody pulp, but the truth is we do have to carry on here. So um, I do think you understand, and um, I guess just to illustrate one last thing, if my quantize start menu indicator is set to one bar, so that's global, if my scene is set to a half note, what if I set the drums, control click, go to playback, quantize start, and I'll set this to quarter notes. Okay. Well, then now this is really interesting because you have an entire hierarchy going on here, don't you? You got the quantize start menu, you have the individual uh, cell itself, and then you have the entire scene. So I'll play this back in quarter notes just so you hear what it sounds like. Let me, uh, I'm going to do this with my return key. I'm playing back and triggering the scene with my return key. Here we go.
so I can turn it on and off really quickly. Right? Uh, <clears throat> let me see if I could use something else. Uh, uh, wait, but this one is not set to that because my individual cell <clears throat> is set to that. So here, let me turn on the hi-hats. Uh, I'll turn on everything but the synth. Uh, everything but the kick, rather. Here we go. So I'm literally playing it back by way of a keyboard modifier return in this case. But again, you can use a controller that fits the bill. And so this just gives you the ultimate flexibility. A little bit of a learning curve, I understand. But I'm telling you, will make a massive difference when you are performing, recording, or just being a creative. All right, let's continue on. So we've covered quantize start extensively. You have the knowledge. Now you just need to apply it. Let's go into play mode. Play mode is obviously connected and related to the quantize start, but it's not the same thing. And let's go over how and why. Play mode in Logic Pro determines how a cell starts and stops when you click the play and stop button. So they're kind of getting it out of the way early. They're saying, hey guys, if you want to determine the, the timing and how these things play back, use the quantized start indicator. If you want to determine the playback behavior of the cells, of the scenes, then you need to play and work with the play mode. That makes sense? Let me go ahead and highlight this. So both of these actions are subject to the quantized start value. So what they're saying is, the quantize start is still dictating when it plays, but how it plays is up to play mode. And that's a really good way of breaking this down. Quantize start value, when, play mode, how. All right, start and stop. This is one mode. There are three primary modes that we can utilize per a cell and per a scene. So let's cover it. Start, stop. The cells will start obviously, and stop. This is default. This is easy, right? One plus one. I hit the cell. It plays. I hit it again. It stops. Let's multiply. Momentary. This one's really cool. Has some great creative usages. And obviously, I'll give you some real-world examples. This is why you're watching this series, because we're covering the very best program in the world, Logic Pro. So many great options. They really make it easy. They really make it practical, but you have to learn the fundamentals. It's really the only way. A lot of people can pass judgment, but unless they really take the time to understand the infrastructure, they really shouldn't have at least a valid opinion. Everybody can have an opinion, but you should really take into consideration the people who have done the work. This program is sound, I am telling you. There are some, some things that, that will be polished up in every DAW. But this program right here can completely, completely alter the course of your music production career. Let's go. Cells start playing when you click and hold the pointer. Or if you're triggering a controller, this should definitely be pointed out. It's kind of confusing if you're a beginner. So, so long as you're playing the cell or triggering the cell soon as you let go of it though it stops playing so that's momentary start stop one plus one is two momentary as long as i'm holding down think of, i don't know a vocal phrase a, a cellist playing some you know great line as long as i'm holding down the trigger it plays and as soon as i let go it's out i like it for vocal samples i'll show you in a second and finally Retrigger. If a cell is playing and you click it again, it starts playing from the beginning. So they're saying here is we're no longer start and stopping. Right? That's old news. When you trigger me again, this time I will start from the beginning. Very similar to what I showed you earlier when I was manipulating and using the Pharrell intro trick. Bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, right? Now, 
It doesn't just have to pertain to the scene. We can have an individual cell be re-triggered over and over and over again, right? And it says here that, uh, uh, let's see, uh, it starts from the beginning. Cells that are set to re-trigger, they can be stopped only by starting another cell in the same row. So if it is set to be re-triggered, the only way that we can actually stop it is by playing something else or by stopping the row using the divider column or by stopping the entire grid. I will highlight that. That seems important. Okay. So how do we select these play modes? If quantize start indicator is when, then play mode most certainly is how. How do you want them to play back? All right, so where do we manipulate these? If you are controlling the cell, then you're going to want to go into play mode. Okay. So that's in the cell inspector. And, of course, we can click on the cell itself and go into playback. Lastly, as stated, you can also change the play mode for the scenes. All right, so let's check that out. All right, so let me, uh, let me go ahead and play an ID here. I'll use my arrow keys this time for fun. Next time, I'll bring out the launch pad. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I guess I'll work backwards. So the scene itself as it stands right now is set to a trigger this is why every single time i trigger the scene it's not stopping right as soon as i set it to stop what do you think is going to happen let's try it oh that's how that works right now that makes sense it's clear i understand the behavior right i just had to learn what play mode did all right so we got it down for the scene let's get it down for the individual cells so we're going into play mode, not in the scene. We just covered that. Okay. I want to perform this action inside of the individual cells. So with this vocal chop, we're going to try it. I'm going to control click. I'm going to go into play mode and momentary. Okay. So. Let me show you what it does in isolation and then in the context of the track. In order to really pull this off, let me go ahead and add some uh, pizzazz, some saturation, some, some uh, nice analog circuitry here. Yes, yes, yes. Let's push the envelope. Good. Okay. So I am going to click on this and I'm going to hold my mouse, my trackpad. And as soon as I let go, it's going to stop. You ready? Okay. Now bear in mind, it will not start until the quantize start indicator makes its full revolution. Now this is also why this is important, right? And another reason why, let me go here. We can determine the quantize start of the individual cell. So this may be blowing your mind if you're really paying attention to it and you're really understanding the, the infrastructure and, and we're just covering, like, top-level stuff. Like, we're going to go so much deeper. But just stay with me, get this part down, and then we will continue going down the rabbit hole. So at this point, I'll say, hey, uh, it's off the grid, please. I, I don't want you to follow anything because I'm going to be triggering you throughout. So now let me just show you. I'm just triggering it whenever I want, regardless of the quantized start. You ready? Here we go. See, I'm just clicking it whenever, regardless if the... A quantized start indicator is uh, halfway done with its revolution. It's still playing maybe a third of the way uh, right there. Nope. All right. And let's go 75% of the way. Right. It doesn't matter. As long as I hold it, it'll play back. Now, just want to be clear that there may be some clicks and pops just due to the nature of the beast, right? If we're playing back an audio and it doesn't conform to, you know, playback regulations or what have you, you might hear a couple little clicks and pops. But in the context of the track in the music, you're not really going to hear anything. So one more time playing back in momentary, right? 
That's play mode momentary. This also is reflected in the cell inspector. I could have made the same choices up here. Uh, sometimes you're 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 in the weeds, and sometimes you you know you have a bit more of an objective view. However you want to do it is fine. Uh, bear in mind, if you wanted to, you can grab the cell inspector and bring it out to you. You have a floating cell inspector. So then now, let's play back with the music, and I'll be triggering it as I please. Here we go. Gotta love it, man. That is awesome. That's just happening live on the spot. It's an entirely different new experience, guys. You gotta try it. It's absolutely invigorating. It's just a whole nother like experience that that we never really were able to achieve before with such fluidity. You know, it's just it's a different world, right? I don't know how you started playing music, but I essentially started playing a guitar, and it very much reminds me of it, although it's it's in a different stratosphere, right? Different plane. But it really is cool that you could just do all this stuff in real time, right? Trigger strings, you know, get suck out the drums like a vacuum, you know, it's incredible. And the fact that you could trigger one shots and loops, right? Super exciting stuff. All right, cool. Uh, how are we doing? You guys good? Yes. All right, beautiful, beautiful. I want you guys to stay up. All right, let's uh, let's keep let's keep uh, continuing this this thing. Uh, let me move this over. Yes. Very good. Okay. So, we now know how to play back. We now know the when. We now know the how. Let's read on changing the start behavior. So, now it's interesting. We we can manipulate how it starts, like the the, the, the way that it starts, right? So the play from setting determines the start behavior of a cell. Okay, so th this is not some throwaway sentence. Just to be clear, let's let's really let's let's take this into account. This determines the start behavior of a cell. By default, cells start playing from the start position. So naturally, everything is set to start. Right? There's three other modes, namely stop position playing cell position, and playhead position. So we'll go over these quickly. I do go over these in full detail in my course, Learning Live Loops. You can check that out at hfmusicacademy.com. Let's finish reading here. However, depending on the content and the timing of your music, you can choose other start behavior settings to create interesting transitions. All right, so now they're giving you another clue. You want to make sure you pick up on these. The engineering is remarkable. They they very very inventive, very interesting. Um, they prepared it for you so you could really enjoy it. I'm telling you. All right. Go so inside of the live loop screen. We're going to select one or more cells, and we're going to choose one of the following settings from the play from pop-up menu in the cell inspector. So again, the terminology is play from. This is another menu item that we will begin to play with and work with. Start on by default, you know what it does. Okay, stop. When I play back, it will differ this time. It won't just start over again. It won't just, and I don't wanna use the word re-trigger, but they are related, but it, it won't start from the beginning again. This time, I will start playing from the point where I last stopped. So if you stopped at the halfway point, the previous trigger or the previous time you played back, this time it's going to finish 
its revolution. If it started at 50% of the way, right, if it was done, halfway done, this time it will fully complete the cycle. Okay, and we will check that out. Let's keep going here. Playing cell position. This one's interesting. If another cell in the same row is playing, the cell starts playing from the position where the first cell stops. Otherwise, the cell starts from the start position. Okay, so now, now it's interesting. Now they're dealing with a relation to another cell and its current playback position. What they're saying here is, if another cell in the same row is actively playing and you start playing the cell that is in this play mode playing cell position or i'm sorry uh yes in this in this play from mode right we have play mode and we have play from let's make sure we get the right terminology here all right and this new cell is in the play from mode playing cell position depending on where the first cell stops, this cell is going to start playing. So if loop A is playing and gets done with 50% of its revolution of its, of its cycle, and then I press play on this new cell and its play from feature is set to playing cell position, then cell B, the new cell, will start playing from the halfway point until it finishes its revolution. And then if you do nothing, it will just keep going on and on after that. So this is really interesting. It makes for some very creative usages. I'm excited to show you. Okay. If, of course, you start at the beginning, like, you know, of the revolution, it's just going to start and behave as it would if you were in the default mode, start position. Very good. Play hit position. Probably the most confusing of the bunch. Has uh, little or nothing to do with the actual cells but everything to do with the playhead position. So the cell will start from the position where it would be as if it had been playing from the beginning of the project. So otherwise the cell starts from the start position. So now it has to do with where it would be in relation to the playhead in the tracks area. So that one to me is like, mm, why did we do this? Is it just because we could? I mean, because we don't have to do everything just because we can do it doesn't mean that we should offer it. You know what I'm saying? But I don't see the application here. I love these three, and I'm sure we can find some other functionality. Uh, maybe like a back and forth, play forward half. Uh, you know, and, and there's a lot more we could do in terms of reversing and stuff like that. But I'm sure there's there's more coming soon with play from. Okay, looks like we should demo those so all right let's start with just an individual cell so this is track number two um i have set this to q how did i do that option return so it is q ready to play if i hit spacebar what's going to happen well depending on when the revolution begins playing the cell will start playing let's try it Okay, so it's still queued. All right. And it's stopping every time. So. All right. Let's check a couple things. It's play mode is start, stop. It's play from is start. So basically, every time I click it, it's going to start. Every time I click it again, it's going to stop. Let's look at the quantize starts every bar. Very good. Let's look at the scene. Play mode start. Okay. Let's look at the quantize start. Oh, this is why it's behaving a little bit different. Right. So let's go to one bar. So I'll press play and then halfway through, I'll press stop. Ready? Let's go now. Stop. Good. All right. Good. Let's click on the cell. Play back. We'll go into quantize start. Oh. So no wonder it was acting differently, right? I checked the scene playback. I thought I was in the proper mode, but I wasn't because this quantized start was in a 
another. Now, usually it's all going to be default, but I've been playing with this and, and setting it up for you guys um, as we've been learning here. So let me set this to one bar. Okay, so then now everything is uniform. And maybe it would be good to have a key command to set all that to default. But anyway, quantize start is set to one bar. The scene playback is also set to one bar. And of course, you could just click global and it'll do the same thing. Let me just make sure. See that? All right. And we'll check the cell just to be clear. Playback. Quantize start, one bar, play from is also on start. Okay, so we're we're back to the default behavior here. So let me play this back starting now. Stop. So again, even though I stopped halfway, because everything is in one bar, it has to finish the entire rotation, yeah? Let's do the same for scene. I'll press play, and then halfway through, I'll press stop. So it didn't matter that I stopped halfway through. It needed to finish its entire rotation. All right, let's get into play modes. Let's see, I'm here, right? Okay, so then I'm looking at start, stop. We know what momentary does. We know what re-trigger does. So all of this is simple. All of this works. Let's go into play from. Stop position, as stated. I'll play the cell, and, and right now I'm doing this on an individual basis just to make it really clear. This is probably the best way of learning from the ground up, right? Isolate a subject, study it, compare, and then you can go and try out some bigger stuff. All right, so stop position. So depending on where I previously stopped, you know, up to this moment, I haven't necessarily stopped anywhere, right? We're, we're kind of starting over, if you will. So... It's just going to start from the beginning, but I will stop halfway through. So let's try this out. Okay. So I am a quarter of the way done. And I should highlight this. This is actually worth, worth your attention. Check that out. Halfway done. So theoretically, if I was in the previous mode, I'd play again. We're starting all over again. But with this, check it out. All right, halfway done. Now remember, all of this is being determined by the quantized star indicator, how it plays back and uh, well, when it starts and when it stops. So it'll start as soon as that goes through a full rotation when I press play now. And it did a whole rotation. I press stop again and now we're a third of the way done. And then finally, okay, so let me show you some real world application here. So I'll just deal with three loops. I'll trigger that one that one and that one all at the same time but only this one has the play from stop mode available let's try it Very good. All right. This is all clear. It's all making sense. Looks like we have two more, though. Not done quite yet. Play back, play from. Playing cell position. So as stated, depending on another cell in the series, this will play back accordingly. So in other words, I'll play this one here on the right-hand side. Let me color pink so we know which one and then i'll go to this cell in yellow to the left let me close the cell inspector but again because the play from is set to playing cell position what do you think is going to happen well based on the user guide it will begin where this one left off Okay, that did not happen. I wonder if they both have to be on or if it's the other way around. Let's try it. So I'll start this one from the top.
Nope. All right. So it looks like both of these have to be set up. I didn't see that in the manual, but playing cell position. Let me just make sure I have this set up here as well. Yes. Okay. Let's go. Okay, so there's something funny going on with the timelines. I see that it's working now, but it's kind of acting a little strange. So let me stop all playback again, and then let me see if I can just isolate these two. Sometimes visually, it's just good to look at them and see what exactly is going on. Let's see here. All right. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Um, it should just follow through. I wonder if I have any weird playback stuff. Um, let me just try one more time. Let's go playback. It should be set. No, that's good. That's good. Mm, quantize start. One bar. Okay, let me look at this one. Uh, let's see. Play back. Quantize start. Oh, maybe. Nah, that shouldn't be it. I don't think that would be it. Oh, quantize. No, I don't know what that is yet. Start, stop, play from. Hmm. Playing cell position. Maybe just for fun, let me just change this to see if this affects it. All right, from the top. Command return, stop all cell playback, and let's go. Yeah, that's not behaving as it should. So I want you to do me a favor. I want you to try this out, and I want you to tell me your findings because that is a buggy. Again, based on the user guide, it says another cell in the same row is playing. The cell starts playing from the position where the first cell stops. So maybe I'll move away from this track. Let me do the synth. Yeah. So let's listen to these two to get some context. Okay, and this is good because they, they sound very different. So, um, again, I'll just start with, uh, let me turn off that click. I'll start with this one. Let's go with playback, play from, playing cell position. Okay, so, play this. There you go. Yeah. All right. So now it's working for whatever reason. There may have been some settings up there. I don't know. But now you're seeing that this one is set to playing cell position. So if any other one of these are playing, depending on where I play back, it will kind of continue on and finish the revolution. So I'll do uh, from the top here halfway and then I'll finish off with this first one. In fact, let me just mute this one for now so we can really see it. Okay, so now you're seeing that back and forth. Now, of course, you can have both of them doing that. So we'll set this one to playing cell position as well. All right, let's see if these will now play. It'll be a little game here where they're just passing the ball back and forth.
All right, so those don't really work that well together, but you can see that they're basically going back and forth. Let's try that one more time. We'll try it here, play back, play from, and we'll do playing cell position. So from the top, let's come out here, the click. E command K, here we go. Okay, so these are not behaving right now. So why not? Why are they not adhering? So again, play from, playing cell position, good. And this should be play from as well. So mm, I don't know, maybe buggy again, but let's try it one last time. Nope. Oh. All right, so hopefully you're getting a sense of what I'm talking about. These two were a little bit buggy, but you did notice the relationship here. See, that's continuing on. Yeah, and so that's the way it's supposed to behave. So just make sure you know what you're looking for when you're playing with that. Again, the last one has to do with the playhead, which I won't describe, uh, but simply put, Depending on, uh, let me show you the playhead, where the playhead is and how it's positioned and where it's positioned, this will play back accordingly. So let's just pretend for a minute, let me grab one of these cells and then I'll move it over like this. So depending on where, now you don't have to have these, these are just for illustration. They don't have to be in the tracks here, just to be clear. So depending on where the playhead is, and the loop is, is positioned in the cell timeline with the quantized start indicator, not with the playhead. These are going to play as if they were in here, but they're, they're essentially in the live loops grid. So um, let's listen to the part. I'll show you what I mean. So, for example, if I avoid the loop halfway which is this portion, and then I press playback inside of live loops, but the playhead is, you know, takes time to get to bar three, then it will start playing back the information. So it's all kind of contingent on the playback and where it sits. Um, let me just show you this part. Okay, so again, um, I will press, let me see, how can I pull this off? Um, Yeah, it's almost like I'll press. Yeah, here's what I'll do. Playback. Play from. Playhead position. Okay, so then now I'm going to press play. And then I'll, let me take that out. And, and and again, the 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 idea is that it's it's like it's playing this back. So I'll press play. And when the playhead gets to bar three, I'll hit the cell. But... It's not going to necessarily play the beginning of the cell. It's going to play as if it was in the playhead, which is basically halfway through. Let me show you what I mean. And this time I will definitely uh, make sure this is in key focus so you can see the actual playback. All right, so I'll hit spacebar, look at the playhead, and then I'll trigger this at bar three. All right, so the reason that happened was because it started at bar three, and that's where it would be in its relation to the timeline. So again, if that doesn't make sense, I have an extensive course on it uh, that covers all the details in a very succinct way, by the way. I know this course that we're doing here on YouTube, I know it's fire, and I know you're loving it, uh, and yet it's work, right? If you want to get it done, it is just it is a grind, so I absolutely get it. Uh, I want to see what else there is left to cover and see if we're going to keep it going today. Uh, you know, let's just kind of see what, what is up here. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where did we leave? Okay, wait. So we just finished that. Um, okay, I think we're here. Page 643. Is that right? Yeah, we just covered all that. That's good. 643. What else we got? Live loop grid. Cycle. Yeah, there's... A good amount of info. Mm. 
Maybe I'll do one more section. What do you guys think? One more section? Should we just go for it? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So, um, yeah, we got all this. Fantastic. All right. Let's do one more, and we will call it a day, my good friends. Hope you're well. Happy, happy, happy Thursday. Uh, stoked to be here. You know, this is great. Just keep going. Getting all the information. Getting it all handed to you. Let's make the most of the information. Learn it, learn it well, and learn it one time. All right. So you can add regions or loops to cells in the live loops grid. So long as the region or loop matches the track type. So in other words, you can't put a MIDI loop inside of an audio track. If you do, it will burn it to audio. Uh, you can't put a MIDI track in a drummer, you know, that kind of thing. For example, you can add audio regions to cells on an audio track or MIDI or pattern regions to cells in software instruments. So we know we can add MIDI and pattern regions to software instruments because it's all just MIDI data. So it says here, after adding drummer regions or pattern regions, you can convert them to MIDI to allow for precise editing and make use of functions that are not available in the step sequencer. So step sequencer is awesome, but you may want to do other things. Use the brush tool, you know, uh, time handles, <laughs> so much great stuff in this program. You can also extract loops from audio cells. We'll say we can extract loops. So we can kind of like find a loop within a loop, if you will, with optimal loop start and end points set by Logic Pro. All right. In addition to adding regions to cells, you can record to live loop cells. Ooh, okay. Record a live loop performance, as we have talked about. And you can also copy cells to the tracks area, as well as copy and paste scenes to the playhead position in the tracks area. All right, so we can copy these cells, copy and paste the scenes, and move information from the live loop grid into the tracks area. When copying cells to the tracks area, take care to match the track type, otherwise it's gonna get messy, right? You wanna make sure that you're putting all the information where it needs to go. So we can paste audio cells only to audio tracks. When you add an audio file without the tempo information, Logic Pro is going to analyze that. It's going to analyze the tempo with audio file. You can edit the tempo information using the smart tempo editor and edit transient commands in the cell editor. If you plan to record audio without a constant tempo to a cell, it's recommended that you record the audio to an audio track in the tracks area using the smart tempo function in Logic Pro. So what they're saying is, hey, you're not going to use a direct and constant tempo. We recommend that you go into the tracks area, utilize adapt, do your thing, and then bring it on over because... It uh, will figure out the beat mapping for you, in which case you can use that inside of the live loop script. I'm really fascinated. I'm just, I'm just thinking over here. Like I'm really fascinated to see how this is going to translate when it comes to a variable tempo map. You know, you have a song and it's playing back and, you know, a, a humanistic feel. How will these live loops adapt? I know that the live loops will play back, and I've done some experiments where they they move with the tempo of the track. Still seems like it's in beta, but let's continue on. Once the audio region is tagged with correct tempo information, you can add the region to an audio cell and have it play at a constant tempo. All right, so another thing that they're saying here, which is really interesting, is, hey... If you don't want to play to the tempo, record in adapt mode, and then when you drag it into the live loops grid, we will fix the timing for you. So for those of you that can't play guitar very well, bass very well, any instrument very well, maybe even sing that well in terms of being on time, you can record it to an adapt tempo utilizing smart tempo. And once you have tempo information tagged and recorded into the audio region, then you can just drag it in and all of a sudden it does the work for you. That's really great. All right. I think this is a good time to stop. Next time I see you guys, we're going to add a region to the live loops grid. We'll be creating new tracks when dragging multiple items. Right? We'll drag like a, maybe a, 
uh, had, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A construction kit. That could be cool. Copy regions to live loop based on selection. So we'll take information from a track, maybe the track that we've been writing on this series, drag it into the live loop script, convert drummer and pattern cells to MIDI cells. So that's really cool. We can convert those the same way we could in the tracks area. We can extract loops. So we'll be really making use of extracting loops from loops. So that's really cool. Resampling, if you will. Create cells. Add a cell from the live loops grid to the tracks area. So I want you to stay tuned for that. I wanted to thank you again for the opportunity to work with you. This has been such a humbling series for me. Again, I've spent a lot of time doing this work, reading multiple books, spending time with uh, world-class producers, beat makers, um, just learning from the best of the best, and, and I'm here to present to you that information. I hope you're enjoying the series. If you are, go ahead and show me some love. All you got to do is spread out the good word. Really wanted to say thank you, and uh, let's, let's keep this going. If you want to do this live with me tomorrow, right, then I will catch you at the appropriate time. I'm thinking it's going to be early, so hit that notification bell so that we can do this again. All right, my name is Eddie Gray, and on behalf of everyone at HF Music Academy, I just wanted to thank you. Let's sign off the proper way you know how we do. Bring that energy from the inside out. Here we go. Have a great day, YouTube. Let's go! Let's go!